I love traveling and visiting a place that I've never seen before just adds to the romance and mystery of the experience. At the beginning of the year, the Mela team took a look at a list of top African destinations for South African travelers in 2016. And Kriya pulled a dream assignment out of the hat. She now shares her Zanzibar experience with us all. Head northeast from Johannesburg to a point in the Indian Ocean roughly 50 kilometers north of Dar es Salaam and you'll be just off the coast of Zanzibar. This archipelago of islands has for centuries linked Africa to the east and hints of its heritage are easily spotted in the architecture and local dress. After just three and a half hours in the air, Kriya made an early morning touchdown on the main island of Anguja. Zanzibar is looking beautiful. I cannot wait to start exploring. The capital is Zanzibar City, which actually consists of a relatively new section called Ngambo that surrounds its much older counterpart known as Stone Town. Thank you. Bye. I think I found the starting point for my next adventure. What I have to do now is find my hotel. Stone Town was built long before the petrol age and the lanes that wind beneath the battlements and balconies are generally too narrow for vehicles. Kriya had been warned that comfy shoes were a must and it seemed like a maze. So she was relieved to find that she'd reached the right address. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. Good. Uh, welcome to the Jeffrey House as well. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So nice and cold. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is ready. All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Stunning. Wow. I could definitely, definitely get used to this. Yay! A refreshing shower was Kriya's first priority. Zanzibar lies only six degrees south of the equator and Stone Town is just a few meters above sea level. So temperatures during the day are around 30 degrees with steamy humidity. Now that I've freshened up, I think I'm going to start wandering around. There's no particular route today. I'm just going to follow my instincts and uh, see where I go. Maybe get lost a little. It's all part of the fun. In 2000, UNESCO declared Stone Town a World Heritage Site in recognition of its importance as a showcase of a unique aspect of Swahili culture. But its spectacular variety of architectural styles reflect the East African, Arab, Persian, Indian and European elements of the Zanzibari heritage. Behind me is one of the most beautiful buildings on the waterfront, the old dispensary. It gets its name from the fact that it actually was a dispensary in the first half of the 20th century. It was commissioned by a wealthy Indian merchant who lived on the island, and it really is beautiful. Kriya was fascinated by the stylistic details reminiscent of Goa or Old Mumbai. But Stone Town also links to the contemporary era. Queen Richard Topper's way before my time, but even I've heard of Freddie Mercury. He's got to be one of Zanzibar's most famous celebrities, so that's why I think today's lunch has got to be retro flavoured at Mercury's restaurant named in his honour. Freddie Mercury was born in Stone Town in 1946 and spent 17 years of his life there. This has got to be the perfect place in Zanzibar. I mean, look at this view. Turquoise blue water, freshly squeezed juices, and it's the perfect place to wait for my guide. Having finished lunch, Kriya strolled down to the beach to meet her guide. Hello. Hello, how are you today? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for taking me around Stone Town. Okay, Karibu Tena, which means welcome again. That is very, very cool. What other Swahili phrases can you teach me? What's hello? Jumbo. Oh, Jumbo. Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah. how do we say, let's get to Stone Town? Twende Mjimkongwe. Or Twende Stone go. Town. Yeah, there we go now. Stone Town is famous for its majestic doors. And Suleiman promised to tell Kriya the story behind them. So here we are now. You can see this is one among the nice having doors in Stone Town here. Oh, it's beautiful. Exactly. This door is mixing with the Indian and a little bit Arabian, but in Swahili architecture as well. How do you know that it's a mixture? A brass pointed one. 
These were designed by Indians in 15th century. All right, and the Swahili influence? The Swahili influence, this square one, you see it? And the Arabic because of the, these flowers. If you walk around in Stone Town, you will see some of them, they've got even the chain. Oh, yes. That can express about slavery. And let's proceed and see all of it. Each door presents its own mix of styles, and Kriya was learning fast. I'm going to guess yeah. from what we were chatting about earlier mm -hmm. that this absolutely stunning door yeah. is of Indian origin. Yes. Am I right? right? Because of the little decorations. You're right. And there's a very interesting design up there. I think it's a lion and a... It's a snake in the middle over okay. there. Okay, all right. Yeah. That for that time in Zanzibar would explain about a royal family person. Mm -hmm. Oh, a person who is very, very rich. So this would have been a home of a very rich or exactly. powerful man. One of the person from the royal family oh, lived really? here, they say it historically. Their next stop was a palace that had fallen into disrepair and was now being restored to something of its former glory. It was also a place with an uncanny air of gloom and the signs revealed the story that confirmed this. Suleiman was just telling me that this was Tippet Tip's house. He was the most notorious slave trader in the whole of Zanzibar. Apparently when he died, he owned 10,000 slaves. It's quite a pity that there's so much scaffolding around the building, but they're in the process of renovating it. Let's see if I can get some pics. Tipu Tip used the proceeds of his slaving to build up an extensive portfolio of clove plantations and his home was an expression of his wealth, taste and willingness to exploit the people and the resources of the Great Lakes region in Africa. My Zanzibar memories are coming along really nicely. Suleiman knew the shortest route through the Warren-like alleys to the largest and tallest building in Stonetown. So we're at the House of Wonders, and this is one of the biggest doors in East Africa. Mm -hmm, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this is was commissioned by the third Sultan of Zanzibar? Yes, he's the one who ruled from 1870 to 1888 to this island of Zanzibar. So he built this building around 1883 for the same ceremonial purpose inside. So for wedding ceremonies? Exactly, get married, your anniversaries, all ceremonial. We'll, we'll be done here. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for showing me around Stone Town and giving me a little bit more information about the doors of Zanzibar. Asante sana. Asante sana. And, and how do you say goodbye in Swahili? In Swahili we say kwaheri. Kwaheri. For me, I can say kwaheri akuonana. I think I'm just going to go with kwaheri. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> You're most welcome. That's good. By now, Kriya was beginning to know Stone Town a little better and browsed the stalls on the way to her next point of interest. Another building I've been told to check out is the Palace Museum, and I think I found it. In contrast to the House of Wonders, this three-storey building was actually used as a residence, and the scale and quality of its design, doors and finishes indicate its royal status. One of the largest structures on the island is the Palace Museum. It used to be known as the Sultan's Palace, as it was built in 1890s as a palace for the Sultan family. Now, however, it's used as a museum to the Sultans of Zanzibar. The Sultans were descendants of the Sultan of Oman, who became ruler of the island in 1698. The top floors are dedicated to exhibits of the Sultanate up to 1890, when Zanzibar became a British protectorate, and a very young Queen Elizabeth II still gazes down from the wall. The era of the Sultans came to an end with the revolution in 1964, and Zanzibar is now a semi-autonomous part of Tanzania. As the sun sets on Zanzibar, the locals are out and about having fun on the beach. But all this exercise is making me hungry. I think I need to go find dinner. Fortunately, all Kriya had to do was follow her nose. Oh, 
food looks amazing. After taking a look around, the Zanzibarian pizza definitely looks like the thing that I'm going to eat. And let's be serious, everybody loves a little pizza. So what goes on to a veggie pizza? Some onion, green paprika, some tomatoes, tomatoes mayonnaise, mayonnaise, some cheese, cheese, and egg also. I'm quite interested to see how the egg's going to cook because uh, I'm not a fan of a runny egg. So let's see how this goes. Ready? Yay! Thank you very much, sir. Okay, karibu sana. Thank you. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, keep yes. No, no. <laughs> nice try. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. well, let's give it a go. Thank you, sir. Don't forget banana chocolate for the dessert. Later for dessert. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. Enjoy. Let's give it a try, guys. It's very hot. I could definitely do this for pizza. Mm. It's been an exciting first day in Zanzibar and it's been really nice to get to know Stone Town a little bit better as well as the culture of the locals. Tomorrow is another fun full day in Stone Town but for now my tummy is full and my feet are sore. I'm going to hit the sack.